The doctor told me that I had a condition for which there were no treatments, and there was no cure. He said I would be confined to a wheelchair and that it was life threatening. Quite the news to lay on a carefree 12 year old. I can still clearly remember the day and time that I made my first shot on a full side basketball hoop. Immediately it became my favorite sound, something I was determined to replicate a million times over. I even had a basketball hoop in my front yard. And I remember every single day after school going outside to play the game that I loved. I uh, watched Jared uh, with his friends playing outside in the front. He played basketball every day. And I started noticing that he wasn't quite as coordinated as the other boys he was playing with. It concerned me a little bit. I had been an athlete and I just always assumed that my boys would be and I would watch him and he just not, he wouldn't fall, he would just be not really coordinated. And I questioned it a little bit but thought not too much of it. He was tall for his age, he was um, growing, so I thought maybe that's all it was. I didn't notice that there was any problems. I mean, I was still doing everything that the other kids could do. I could. You know, I was playing sports just like them, playing basketball, doing all the things that they were doing, and I didn't think there was any difference between me and them that I could notice. I watched it for a couple of years, and when he was in seventh grade, I was watching him out the window one day, and I thought, something is just not right. And then he began um, grazing doorways. When he would go into a door, he would hit the side of the door. Um, he would take his shirt off before he got in the shower, and every day he would fall. And I knew something was wrong. So I um, took him to a doctor, and uh, the doctor told me that I was being overprotective, and that there was nothing wrong. He was tall for his age, he was going through a growth stage. Relax. And so that's what I did. Um, the falling continued, the grazing of the doorways continued, the uncoordination on the basketball court continued. Uh, he was playing actually organized basketball at that time, and he was just different than everybody else out on the court. Um, so in December of 2000, I took him to another doctor who happened to be a friend of mine and expressed my concerns, and he told me as well that I was being overprotective and that he was um, tall for his age, he would grow out of it, I needed to relax. And I just uh, told him I knew there was more to it than that. This wasn't just normal. And so he said, well, how about if we watch it for six months? We'll watch for six months, and if you're still concerned, then we'll pursue it further. So I watched it for a month, and every day he was falling. And so I called the doctor back, and I said, I've, watched, I've picked my son up for the last time. You're gonna help me find out what's wrong with him or I'm going to find someone who will. So at that point he referred me to a neurologist here locally. We went to that neurologist and within five minutes of being in there we knew we had a problem. And we were referred to UCLA. On the final day of my seventh grade year, I can still remember the bell ringing, signaling the beginning of summer for most kids. However, I got in the car and headed down to UCLA. At the time we went to UCLA, we saw Dr. Perlman, who is um, one of the foremost experts um, in the country on neurological disorders. Um, at that time, we were told that they suspected Friedrich's ataxia or another ataxia. Um, they decided to do genetic testing that day, and they told us it would take a couple of months to get the results. After leaving UCLA that day, I came home and um, started researching it on the internet, and I knew within a matter of a very few minutes that he definitely had Friedrich's ataxia. He had um, the majority of the symptoms, and I felt confident that that's what he had, um, but still had in the back of my mind the hopes that that's not what it was. Um, until that time, I had never heard of Friedrich's ataxia. I didn't know what it was. I didn't know how to pronounce it. It was all new. A lot of people ask me what Friedrich's ataxia is. Well, it's a genetic neuromuscular 
condition that is progressive. It's life-threatening. Um, it affects my balance and my coordination. Only about 25,000 people in the world have this condition. However, it doesn't affect me mentally. There's no effects. It's purely physical. When we went back in June of 2001 to get the diagnosis, even though I knew in my heart what it was, when they spoke the words, I um, felt like I had been hit in the stomach. I literally um, almost fell to the floor. It was more than I could bear. Um, over the last several years, I've learned that you know you take it a day at a time, and there's a lot worse things, and I wouldn't trade being Jared's mom for anything in the world. There was no specific moment when, when I uh, lost any ability. It was just a gradual, progressive thing. But I, I do remember some things about it. You know, I remember in high school not making the basketball team. And that was kind of one of those moments where I, I knew that it wasn't by any fault of mine or I didn't try hard enough or I wasn't working hard enough. Um, I do remember the, um, the last time in my, it was actually in my driveway. I remember the last time that I ever shot a basketball. And, uh, I just, oh, I don't know how to say this. I, I just shot the bonnet. It, it's like it finally clicked to me that it wasn't, um, it just didn't come easy to me, didn't come naturally to me. And I remember thinking like, I'm over this, I'm tired of it, I'm not doing anymore. And, uh, One of my greatest fears when Jared was first diagnosed was that he was going to be alone, that um, he wasn't going to have friends, that he was going to be isolated, that he would get depressed, um, that no one would be there for him. And I couldn't have been more wrong. He's basically, you know, a brother and a friend in every way without even him having to try. Being with Jared um, throughout these years to me has been um, a real big blessing because I've known that in Jared I have a very constant uh, friend. I see Jared standing up straight and tall and I know that someday that Jared is going to walk and that we're going to see it. So to me, Jared is a vision of hope. He has been probably the most real uh, the most real example of faith I think I could take from anyone alive today, you know. He um, is probably the, one of the funniest people I know <laughs> and even um, regardless of his, or his circumstances, um, he's just always laughing and just always full of joy. The, uh, the best thing about Jared is that, is just that if you ask anybody about him or uh, Anybody that knows him, if, if you ask him about him, the last thing that they'll mention is, is that um, he has FA or, or any sort of disorder or disease or anything like that. Um, it's just, he has so many other things about him. That he can always make you feel better about whatever you're going through. Uh, he always sees the, the lighter side of things. And uh, he's just a really, really good friend. Actually, Jared to me isn't. An example of someone who is living his life for Christ in the midst of a crisis. Off the wall, crazy, uh, fearless, doesn't care what anybody thinks about him, uh, passionate, he goes with everything with his whole heart, uh, good brother. I can just feel just how much Jared loves me and my family, and I feel the same way. The thing I love about Jared is he doesn't live in anybody's shadow. Jared is his own man, and he has not allowed this disorder 
to ever cause him to be something different than who he really is. My advice to anybody who has a child who's been recently diagnosed with Friedrich's ataxia is um, it's not a death sentence. They can still live a full life. Jared has an amazing life. He um, has great friends. He has lots of activities. He's busy all the time. He has a great social life. And um, I think that our outlook determines a lot of their outlook. Um, if we make them think that their life's over, then that's how they're going to feel. But Jared, um, he has a great life. He has a full life. He doesn't feel like that he lives any less of a life than anybody else. And uh, you just take it one day at a time. You know, you don't know what tomorrow holds, but the truth of the matter is we don't know what that holds for any of us. So we, you know, live each day to its fullest and make the best of it. Being diagnosed with the FA has changed me physically, obviously. As a person though, it has just refined and made stronger my qualities. I still love basketball. When the NBA season rolls around, you'll catch me always watching and following. I thoroughly enjoy running my quad and try to do so every weekend when the weather is better. I still want to ride dirt bikes and that one day I'll be able to. The biggest thing I want people to know about me is I'm not typical. I am approachable and I'm willing to help out in any way I can. I love life, I love people, and hopefully after talking to me you can take something life changing away from it. I'd be lying to say that my faith is not the overriding factor that makes me who I am. The legacy I want to leave is simple. I am a man obedient to the call of Jesus Christ in my life. I'm not perfect and I definitely make mistakes, but my number one goal in life is to glorify the Lord. Having F.A. has made me the toughest person I know both physically and mentally. I'm not afraid to mention this life. When it's my time to go, I know where I'm going. Funny enough though, I am terrified of needles and occasionally getting my blood drawn. The ECLA is maybe my worst nightmare. When people first meet me, they usually are not expecting to meet somebody with a personality like I have. I don't sit around downcast, and I definitely don't have a woe is me attitude. I'm always upbeat and I'll do anything I can to make you laugh. If I can demonstrate Christ through my actions, then I have done my job. One of the things I hate most is when people tell me that they feel sorry for me. My response to that is always the same. Don't waste your time, since when is feeling sorry for someone who ever got anything accomplished? I'm determined to make a life worth living. Do what you can and team up with us to help find a cure for F.A. Please join us to, to find a cure for F.A. and uh, help my friend Jared and others like him. Please support FAR in their research to help all those with Friedrich's ataxia. Please do whatever you can uh, to help us eradicate this disease, not only from Jared's life, but from everyone that's affected by it. Every dollar you donate goes towards this wonderful cause, so please join us um, in support of um, helping FAR um, fund research to find a cure and treatment for those like Jared with FA. To know that they're so close to a cure, but yet funds stop the research, and it's huge. How can you say that this life is not worth the funds that are needed for the research? Um, it's, it's not that hard to uh, get involved, um, and we do appreciate any and all of your guys' support. Uh, you can visit um, curefa.org for more information, um, and any donations are helpful, um, little um, or big. So I just challenge and encourage you to be a part of uh, the Friends of Jared. Become a friend of Jared. 
by participating, by spreading the word, by spreading awareness, by donating, by giving, by helping with events, in whatever way you can, I just encourage you to be a part of the Friends of Jared. I can tell you that if you do, your life will forever be impacted. Oftentimes I'm asked what people can do to help in our fight against Friedrich's ataxia. Today I'm asking you to give. Every dollar given goes toward research aimed at finding a cure, not only for Jared, but for many others suffering from this horrible disorder. In the last several years, many strides have been made toward finding a cure. The gene has been identified, and now there are numerous studies going on all over the world for drugs that can help my son and others. We work hard, not only here in Bakersfield, but there are several grassroots organizations all over the nation and the world trying to find a cure for this disorder. Just know that every dollar you give is well spent, and it can mean the difference in the life of my son and many others.